What's up everybody, I'm MDW and I've got another Hot Toys review for you today, this time Captain Phasma from The Force Awakens. So let's open her up and check her out. So with all Hot Toys figures, the front of the box showcases the figure within. And then on the back of the box, it's just got details about the figure, the sculptors and the company, everything like that. When you open the box inside, it's got the classic Hot Toys display picture with, featuring Captain Phasma and the First Order Stormtroopers with Starkiller Base behind it. You crack open the box there, she's obviously packaged in this classic clam shell plastic. And there it is with it off there, and there's a look at the figure inside the box as well. Really nice and shiny, really looking forward to getting my hands on this one. Outside the box there, as you can see straight away, what a shiny set of armour. Okay guys, we're back. So, we've taken her out of the box now, so let's have a closer look at the articulation on Captain Phasma. So the VAC metal looks superb on her, really, really cool. It's so shiny, you can see me in the camera there as well, look. So let's run down the articulation on Captain Phasma. So she's pretty much the same standard as the First Order Stormtrooper. So her head rotates left, right, up and down. The design of the helmet gives loads of motion there. So you know, you can see her neck up and down, left and right. No issues there at all. With the First Order Stormtrooper, because it's got the thicker undersuit to it, like the rubbery thick undersuit, there isn't as much articulation as so the Stormtroopers and Darth Vader with the cloth undersuit. So her arms go up there. I mean, you can hear the kind of clicking of the, the armour. Uh, you know, the hard plastic armour. Oh, in fact, look, that's just fallen off. That glue underneath there like that. So yeah, so there we go. So first of all, just moving her arms up and down there, the glue has come undone and the shoulder pad has fallen off. So now I'm going to have to super glue that back on. But let's have a look at the rest of the articulation while we're out of there. So her uh, armour here and the arm moves up and down, but the joint and her elbow and arm there moves fine and twists. And then her hand obviously rotates as well. Same with the other arm as well. It hasn't got much of a torso crunch. You know, kind of a body kind of swivels a little bit, but there's no crunch there at all because the metal, you know, the plastic is all, they're all stuck together. And the utility belt doesn't really move either. It's kind of static on there. And then her legs, again, kind of because of the cod piece and the, the thick leather here, you know, the, the metal armor moves a little bit to allow for a bit of movement, but she kind of does the splits and, you know, a little bit, that's all you're gonna get out of it. Moves forward a little bit, back. Again, I wouldn't recommend it too much, so, but yeah, do you know what I mean, there is free motion and movement there. Knee bends there at the knee. Can't really do anything else though. They're kind of up a bit here, hits the belt, but you can't move. And then the legs as well are on a ball joint, so they kind of, again, their armor kind of hinders the movement a bit. You can't really swivel them left and right because of this half plastic armor here, but they kind of go up and down there as well. So, you know, not much movement from her. So you probably get, it's obviously a display piece more, so you're not gonna be like running around with her everywhere, making her do the okie koki or whatever. So, you know, that's probably a pretty decent amount of articulation for something that looks as cool as this with all that armour. It's a kind of trade-off, I assume, you have to do for the actual shiny metal, back metal armour. The same with the First Order Stormtrooper as well. So a quick look at the detailing then on Captain Phasma. She's got plenty of weathering going on in her armour there, so it isn't just kind of shiny back metal all over. You can see, I don't even make it out there yet, just on the helmet there. So you've got like little bits of rust or kind of dirt, mud wear on her helmet going all the way down and this is all over the figure she's got her shoulder pad there around the top back so you know it kind of adds a little bit more narrative to the figure rather than just being like super shiny back metal armor back of the armor you can see i think the undersuit comes off so i don't know if you guys can see that there's like a little zip there i don't think you can make that out there in this light but there's a little zip that comes down there so i'm assuming you can remove her undersuit as well and perhaps put on a material undersuit so it gives her a bit more articulation that might be another option for you guys Detailing there like the rest of the first door of stormtroopers with a pouch and the detonator or whatever it is they have on their back there. But yeah, so really, really cool design of the whole figure. I kind of like it as well. I know Gwendolyn Christie, uh, Gwen, Gwendolyn Christie said it when she played Phasma that she liked the idea that the suit wasn't kind of feminized in any way. I kind of do like that as well. So it just kind of fits in with the rest of the troopers. There is a little bit of a feminine feel to the legs, are kind of perhaps a little bit smaller than the 
standard stormtrooper, but I mean, there's nothing else to just trap in the armor there that would suggest it is a lady at all, really. You know, so it's kind of cool. He just sits in with the rest of the first order troopers on the shelf. Right, so let's have a look, guys, and see what else you get in the box with her. First up is the instruction manuals there. You get one of those in all the hot toys. Some of them are useful, like Darth Vader and the ones that have batteries in them. So you get that. You get the classic base as well to display them on. So it's got the First Order logo there. And then Styles Captain Phasma on the top there. Really nice design. I quite like that. Some of the sideshow ones just have a black base. You know, I like the little bit of design on it there. And then it's got the support for the figure as well. So it's a you know, spring mount so you can pull it up and down there. And then your figure just literally sits on top there. And then you adjust it to the height of your figure stands nice and solidly on there so that's excellent she gets a cape as well obviously what Captain Phasma would be without a cape there which I'll go into detail in a second I'll put it on her but again you know it's got the wiring at the bottom of the cape like Hot Toys have on some of the cloth parts of the figures so you can bend the cape and it should stay there so it's got little bits of wiring right down the seam there it doesn't have it at the sides here so it kind of drapes more like a cape rather than stuff like Darth Vader's I believe has got it all the way down and then the cape is quite weathered as well, so I don't know if you can see that. There's like splodges of snow or mud or everything up the back of the cape there, right the way around, just to add a bit more detail into it as well. So we'll get to that. She has a blaster come with her as well, a kind of shiny gold vac metal blaster. It's got a gold tint to it, so it stands out a bit differently. I'm pretty sure it's a bit bigger as well than some of the other blasters. I don't know if that's bigger than the standard first order one. I'll have to have a look at that. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. Loads of detailing on that as well, and the gold really does offset against her armor, which looks really good. And then with all the first order stuff and the Hot Toys figures, you get the interchangeable hands. So you've got one of her kind of pointing or holding the gun there. You've got two of those. You've got one of her holding something else there. Two clenched fists there. And then kind of some, I don't know what that one is there. Kind of some sort of, kind of handshake it looks like. So yeah, you get those as well in the box with her, and then you get these little two replacement pegs here. So for her hands, if you want to interchange her hands off, they literally just snap off of the figure. There, so you just literally twist them, and then the hand comes off. There's a little peg there which you can replace with one of these hands, and you get two spare replacement pegs in the box if you ever lose them. But yeah, after that, it's just literally a case of taking this peg off, putting on another hand, and swapping the hand out. The gun does actually magnetise on her leg, which is really cool as well. So the magnet is just down this part of the gun here, and then it just literally sits on her leg there as well, and sits nice. Looks a bit crazy with this giant cannon strapped to her leg, but, you know, it's a cool feature. So when you put a cape on, it literally just fits around her neck like this, and then there's a little peg on the strap here, which pushes in to the strap on the cape as well, just there, you guys can see it there, and it just sits in place. Here's a size comparison with the First Order Stormtrooper and her gun. Obviously it's massive compared to it, as I thought. The figure stands at 13 inches, which towers above the standard First Order Stormtrooper, and it's only until you get them together that you actually realise that. So there we go everybody, there's a review of the Hot Toys Captain Phasma figure. If I'm honest, I'm a bit disappointed. Parts of the armour on my figure fell off, she doesn't really stand up very well, the joints are a bit loose around the ankles, and the cape kind of dangles quite a lot. It looks alright on there, but there's not really much posability on the cape, and there's a bit of too much weathering on it, I think, for my taste. She's a more expensive figure out there as well, so, you know, uh, the lack of articulation, she's very static. You know, perhaps would detract from that with some of the other figures out there for around the same price or even cheaper. Anyway, she's on my shelf now. She's added to my collection. If you see her for a good price, I recommend adding her to yours. Thanks very much, everybody. MDW signing off. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.